In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the upper control arm bushings on the front of this Toyota 4Runner. Let's get started. Now use your 21mm socket, remove all six of your lug nuts, and then take the wheel off. Now with the wheel off, let's remove the ABS sensor off of the control arm, take a 10 millimeter socket, take the bolt out. A lot of times these break, mine didn't, looks like somebody already replaced it, but just be careful with them because they do rust out inside on the threads here and uh, you'll snap it. If yours does break, you're either going to have to tap the hole and re-thread it or you can just secure this with a wire tie when the time comes to reinstall. But for now, take this off. Next, I want to remove this shield here, if your vehicle has it. Take your trim tool and just pop out the push clips. There are three of them. There's one, two, and three. Set this aside. This is optional, but you can remove your axle nut if you want to. So you would take this cap off. That's if you have the four wheel drive version, of course. Take this cap off, 36 millimeter socket, take the axle nut off. You don't have to. What you can do is as the knuckle comes down, once we unbolt the upper ball joint, just be careful not to pull it out all the way. Just lean it to the side instead. I'm actually just gonna tie it with a bungee cord and that way it won't go anywhere. Let's take off the cotter pin. Discard this, don't ever reuse your cutter pins. Then use your 19 millimeter socket and remove the nut. Once it's off, put it back on a few threads so that once the ball joint stud breaks free from the control arm, it doesn't separate uncontrollably. Tap the control arm right here. Make sure you don't hit the, the knuckle or the boot of the ball joint or where's the stud here. This will be very easy to hit if you miss, but the vibrations should break these two free. There we go. Now, you can pry down on this, just like that. Take the nut off if you can't pry down because it's under too much pressure. You can just use a pry bar. There we go. The knuckle's gonna wanna come forward. It can't go too far, but at this point, you can lean it to the side like this. And uh, like I said, or you know, just push it back. And I'm just gonna use a bungee cord and secure it right here. I'm gonna put this nut back on just so I don't lose it. Take your bungee cord. I'm gonna go right on the steering shaft here. Don't go on the brake line. Try to avoid hooking anything that will put pressure on it. And then loop it around the other side and just secure it right in here. Perfect, this will prevent it from swinging out. Of course, it can still move around, but it's not gonna come out too far. Now we need to remove the through bolt for the control arm. It's one long bolt that goes from one side to the other. I'm gonna hold this side, which is the head of the bolt with a 19 millimeter wrench. And then I'm gonna go on the back side with a 19 socket. You're gonna have to use a swivel unless you wanna ratchet it by hand. Okay, stopped. I'm gonna bring it back and work it back and forth, spray it with some more rust penetrant, but it did break free and the whole bolt is moving, which is great news because that means it's not seized in there, which sometimes they do. Okay, I'll spray it again. I worked it back and forth a couple times. It's uh, fairly rusty on here, so that's why I'm doing all this. There we go. On the nut side, there's the nut, of course, but there's also this washer. Save it, because we'll have to reuse it when we reinstall. 
Now I want to disconnect the battery. The reason for that is because if you are working on the driver's side control arm, the bolt, as you'll see later in the video, is going to interfere with the driver's side crash sensor for the airbag. And you do not want to touch that or uh, jolt it and vibrate it in any way or even disconnect it without the battery being disconnected. So take a 10 millimeter socket, remove the negative battery terminal securing nut and take this off. As an extra step, I'm going to also remove the positive terminal and I will touch the two together. What that's gonna do is it's going to forcefully discharge all capacitors in the vehicle. Nothing bad will happen from doing this. Hold it like this for 15, 20 seconds. Capacitors will hold current for a, a lot longer than you think. Could be hours after you've disconnected the battery. And those capacitors could trigger the airbag if they have enough power in them. Doing this won't damage anything, but the very, very low amperage short will completely drain them. That's pretty good. Set those aside and let's continue. Looking underneath the battery in the battery tray, you'll see the yellow wire and connector bolted up to that sensor. That is the crash sensor I was talking about. And we have to take it off of the frame because the bolt is interfering with it. The uh, control arm bolt, as we slide it out, it'll come up this way and it'll hit the sensor. So after you've discharged all your capacitors or waited for a while, you'll see the 10 millimeter bolt right here on the frame. Remove that, that is the only thing holding this on. I don't want to disconnect the wire, I just want to unbolt it directly and set it aside. Pull that off, take the bolt out. On the other side of the bolt that we just removed, right above the yellow connector, you'll see a second 10 millimeter bolt. So slide your tool on that and remove that one as well. It fell on the ground, but it's out. So now we can grab this Move it to the side carefully. At this point, the control arm can move around. As you pull it through, make sure this washer stays because obviously it's not going to clear. Oh, there we go. There's, it's out. There's the control arm. You can just slide it off. There it is. And now you can take your bolt out. As you can see, extremely long. You want to inspect it because a lot of times they do rust out on the shank of the bolt here. So if they are damaged, rotted, in poor condition, replace it, get it from the manufacturer. This is obviously a specialty bolt, but if it's in good condition like this one, I'm just gonna clean up the threads and reinstall it. Now to replace these bushings, you're gonna to wanna to press them out because they have this lip here, as you can see on the new one, they can only come out one way and they can only go back in the same way. Having said that, in order to put a cup on here to press it, yes, you can put a large one and hold it on the control arm here, but it's got nothing on this side. So my idea is to take an air chisel and bend this lip down so I can put a cup right on the control arm and then press them out this way. If you don't have an air chisel, you can try to cut this or do whatever you have to do. You just have to get this lip out of your way. All right, at this point, I'm pretty sure we've narrowed it down enough to where I can fit a cup right here, and then I can press it out. Now at this point, whether it presses out just the center piece and completely rips it apart, or presses the whole thing out, either of the two work, preferably of course, it would press the whole thing, the whole bushing out. Most likely, however, the outer sleeve is gonna be stuck on the control arm, and we're gonna have to press the inner sleeve out, get, up, get the rubber out, and then press the outer sleeve out. But like I said, we just wanna press something out at this point. So here's the setup that we're gonna to use to press this out. I'm gonna use a manual ball joint press, which is basically the tool made for this job. Once the top is peened over and pushed in, you should be able to slide a cup on. That fits almost perfectly on here. You want it to sit flat on this lip of the control arm. If it's just barely too big, it's actually gonna start going to the side as soon as you put pressure on it. You wanna avoid that because then you're you know, pressing at an angle. Through this, I'm gonna put the rod that's uh, gonna do the pressing for us with the adapters needed at the top, whatever you're using. And on the bottom, I have the bottom piece of the press itself. I used a random nut that I had laying around. 
I um, intended on using this spacer, but it turns out that although this will work for the new bushing, the original one, most likely because of rust, is just a little bit narrower, so I can't press it as well with this one. It's actually gonna press into the rubber. So I'm using this washer, so I'm using this nut, which has a larger washer built into it. And that's gonna press perfectly on the outer sleeve of the bushing, which is this right here, and not on the inside. Having said that, let's start pressing the bushing out. If you look through here, you'll see it move up. Okay, there it is. Let's take our uh, adapters off of here. This bushing is somewhat stuck inside the tool here, but it's okay, I can just take a hammer and a punch, punch it out the other side. It's most likely because of these little areas that we um, accidentally created, but you have to. You have to get that lip off so you can press it, but there's your bushing. Before we install the new bushing in the control arm, let's clean out this area. If yours isn't rusty like mine, then we'll just clean it off with a rag. But I'm gonna use a wire wheel on a drill just to remove the debris, remove the rust, so that the new bushing can slide down into the control arm nice and smoothly. Wipe it off once you're done cleaning it just to remove all the dust from the cleaning process. All right, let's get the new bushing. Let's install the new bushing. I'm gonna use some silicone paste. You can just use grease, whatever you have. You don't have to, but a lot of times it does help installation. It'll just allow it to slide in a little better and easier. I'm gonna do the same in here. Slide this on. And now I'm gonna use the same tool to press it. So I'm going to use the rod that I put through it. This is the same cup that we actually used to press it out, but it fits perfectly on this top lip here. You don't want to press right on the ridge, and you definitely don't want to press on the inside, which is why I'm going right on the center of the outer uh, sleeve. And then on the bottom, we need a cup to press up against. If you have anything that's shorter than this, well, that's great. But for me, this one fits perfectly on the ridge there, and I know that it'll stay centered. Slide in the rest of your tool here. And as you press this down, you want to make sure that it's going in even and uh, straight. There's no, there's no direction to angle this in as long as it's facing the right way. But it does have to go in even. Otherwise, if you, if you press it in too hard and it's going at an angle, you can actually bend this outer sleeve or damage the control arm, and then you're in for more trouble, basically. All right, make sure everything is nice and centered. Just like this. And now, let's tighten this up and it should start pressing in. If it's just barely off, as you can see, it'll pull itself uh, and basically straighten itself out. You just wanna make sure it's not severely angled. It's not gonna be it's not gonna require a lot of force until it gets up here. As you can see, this is a machined lip on here. So yes, it's pressing in, but it's gonna press in really tight once it gets to the top. I can see that this is squishing down a little bit, so I'm gonna release pressure, recenter it. Now, if it does damage this top piece of the rubber right on the lip just a little bit, that's okay. It's not actually doing anything crucial, but uh, you just don't want it to go down in the middle and start cutting into that. Try and 
hold it centered here. Yeah, it's getting, it's getting tight. Um, I can notice that the lower cup here is not centered, so most likely the bushing has reached the cup and it just needs to get centered like this so the bushing can protrude slightly. It's not going to come out the bottom, but it does sit flush, so it needs some space. This cup is too small, so I'm going to switch it out for one that is just a little, little larger, one size bigger. But we're most of the way there, and it did go nice and smooth, so that's perfect. I upsized the cup a little bit. There we go. That's pressing in the rest of the way now. And, yeah, that's bottomed out. So, if you look right here, you should not be able to see any space. It is very difficult to continue tightening it now, which means it's compressed as much as it'll go. Now I'm gonna loosen it, remove my pressing setup here, and inspect the bushing to make sure that not only is it pressed all the way, but it's centered, it's uh, not damaged in any way, and, uh, then we can continue and uh, do the other one. Okay, that's off of here. No damage at the top whatsoever. This rubber is still perfectly intact. It's pressed down all the way. There's no gap here. And on the other side, it's protruding just a little bit, about a millimeter. So that is exactly what I want to see. Now, let's do the same to the other side. Peen this over, get the press set up here, press it out, press the new one in, and then we'll install it in the vehicle. And there's the other side bushing. Now let's get the control arm back on the vehicle. Let's get the control arm installed on the vehicle. Line it up the best you can. Both bushings will not line up right off the bat because they're newer, they have tighter tolerances, they're not worn. So line up this side where the bolt slides in first. Don't forget the, don't forget the washer on the bolt. And then slide the bolt into the control arm. Line it up with its mounting location start the bolt in so at least it's held in place and then you're going to want to use a pry bar and most likely have to pry that bushing just slightly out a little bit. Oh, there we go. That just slid it onto where it needs to sit. Perfect. Just like that. It's not, it's still not going to line up perfectly, but at least now you can push the bolt through now move it around and in whatever direction it takes to get it all the way through. Don't forget the washer, as you can see, has a direction to it. It's cupped outwards, so make sure you put it on the right way. And of course, the mounting nut. The control arm needs to be torqued at right height, otherwise it'll prematurely wear the bushings that you just installed. You wouldn't want that. So what I'm gonna do is stick a pry bar through the spring here and right height, get the ball joint out of the way, right height is gonna be somewhere around here, actually a little bit higher, so right about there. The pry bar is gonna hold the control arm where I need it to be. Now I can snug up the bolt and then torque it. Hold the bolt and tighten up the mounting nut. And now we'll torque it to 87 foot-pounds. That's it right there, perfect. Now you can remove your pry bar or whatever else you use to hold the control arm up. Remove your bungee cord or anything you use that to hold the knuckle on. Then grab the ball joint, make sure there's no debris on here. The threads are still good. 
slide it through the upper control arm, press this down, grab the mounting nut, and thread it on as much as you can by hand just so it can hold it steady for you. Now let's bottom this out, tighten up this nut, and then torque it to 80 foot-pounds. That's 80 right there, but we do have to line up the cotter pin slot with the castle nut. Mine doesn't line up by quite a bit, so I'm gonna keep tightening. You don't ever wanna loosen to line these up. A Little more. There we go, that lines up. Slide the cotter pin through and bend it over to lock it in. Resecure the ABS wire to the control arm. Very important so it doesn't flop around and get caught in the tire. Again, if your bolt breaks or you don't have the uh, means to resecure it for some reason, make sure you secure it in other ways, such as a wire tie. Nice and snug. Don't forget to put back this shield here. Put all the push clips back that you still had. Let's get the wheel back on. Put on all six of your lug nuts, bottom them out, and torque them to 76 foot-pounds. Seventy six foot pounds in a cross pattern. Perfect. Now let's reconnect the airbag crash sensor here. Doesn't matter which bolt you start with first. I'm just going to go for this one because it's lower and a little bit more visible and accessible. This one right here. Once that one lines up, you can pivot the whole assembly on this one so you can line up the other one. That one's nice and snug. And same with that one. It's very important that you secure this properly. Let's reconnect the battery, start with the positive terminal. Make sure that there's no corrosion built up. Slide it all the way down and tighten it up. Once it gets snug, just give it a little extra. You don't have to crank them down too hard. As long as you can grab it and it doesn't move, you're good to go. Then do the negative. Tighten this one down as well. Same thing, don't go too tight. Perfect. Now, go get yourself an alignment. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.